Give me a minute to find it here. Let's see. Six. Last page. Uh, num problem number six? Problem number six. And then for question five, I had a, a high um, coefficient of friction. Is Can equations be used to describe the motion of objects? such as these. Uh, wait a second. Say that again now. Um, I had a high coefficient of friction. Okay. So I'm just wondering, you know, can I still explain that with question five or do I need to go back and look at my math, you know? What do you mean by high coefficient of friction? I had 0.83. Um, <clears throat> So you're between zero and one. Those are the boundaries. Mm -hmm. So is that for the sandpaper? Yes. Okay. Um, it might actually be that high. I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me to, to compare, but uh, it might actually be that high. So as long as you're between zero and one, you, you probably did the math right, although it wouldn't hurt to double check. But um, you know, if, if you had gotten 1.2, I would have said, that's wrong. <laughs> Okay. But, you know. Well, before I just wrote that explanation out, I wanted to make sure I was on the right track. Okay. And then problem six. Okay. So, uh, problem six. It tells you the ramp is 15 meters tall and 30 meters along the incline. And you place a box at the top of the ramp and wish to know the velocity at the bottom, the coefficient of friction between the box and the ramp is that. What is the final velocity? Use energy. So, um, we've got a ramp. It's 15 meters here. 30 meters here. And uh, it says the coefficient of friction is 0 0.231. And it asks, what is the final velocity? And since we're supposed to use energies here, which equation should we start with? Sir. Hey Hunter. Hey. Uh, basically everything in chapter five is starts with this equation. Energy initial equals energy final minus work not conserved. Is that the one you meant? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this this is called the work energy theorem. That's the fancy word for it, but it's, it just means this. And yeah, this is the bulk of the this is pretty much the whole chapter. Um, okay, so what's the energy in the, well, I guess we need to start with the question, where does the box start? It starts um, at the top. So it starts out up here. So this is the start. And where does it end? At the bottom. So here's the end. Okay, so now in the initial situation, let's see here, what kind of energies do we have? Potential energy. Yep. Anything else? Um, it isn't moving, so. Yeah, that's it, right? Okay, and then in the final situation, down here, what kind of energy does it have? Would be kinetic energy since it was just another velocity. Yep. So you want to ask at both of these questions, what's the energy here? What's the energy here? You want to ask yourself three questions. Is it off the ground? 
Is it moving? And is there a spring stretched or smashed? And so if it's off the ground, then there's potential energy, just like you had here. And then is it moving? That's just that's kinetic energy. And then if there's a spring stretched or smashed, that's going to give you potential energy for your spring. So in the final situation, this is on the ground. So there's no potential energy. It only has kinetic energy. And, uh, and then here's the tricky part. We have to subtract off the work not conserved along the way. And for this book, work not conserved basically boils down to just two things. Friction and you or a friend pushing on it. So that's it. So was there friction along the way? Yes. Yeah. So we have to subtract off the work done by friction. <clears throat> okay, so potential energy is MGH. Kinetic energy is one half MV squared. You just get those right out of your equation sheet. And then this work done by friction, that's the tricky one. So let me write that out here. Work done by friction is, uh, well, work is always force times distance, right? Hey, Ansley. How you doing? Good. Good. We're working on problem six, lab six. Hey, Clay. How you good. doing? Good. How are you doing? We're doing good. We're working on problem six, lab six. Gotcha. Okay, so work, whether it's work done by friction or something else, work is always force times distance. And the two have to be parallel. <clears throat> okay, so as this box is sliding down the incline, which way does the force act? Opposite. Yeah, friction always opposes motion, right? So the friction is here, the force of friction. Which way is it moving? Down. It's moving this way, right? The distance. Okay, so now, are those parallel? They're anti-parallel. Yeah, so what does that tell you? That'll work. Yep, so parallel or anti-parallel, that works. But if it's anti-parallel, you gotta put in a negative sign. Okay. So this becomes uh, negative force of friction times the distance that it moves. And the negative comes from the fact that they're anti-parallel. So the force of friction is normal force times mu, and the distance moved would, was given in the problem as 30 meters. Does that make sense? Now, here's the catch that students always forget. That negative sign there and this negative sign here, you've got, they both have to be there. So this is minus a negative. So that ends up adding. So I'm going to write out minus a negative which becomes a positive. Um, now, what's the normal force? We haven't figured that out yet. Nope. So how are we, how are we going to do that? Um, it's going to be crooked. Yep. Yep. So, we got to go back to chapter 4 for this. So we got to draw our vectors on here. The normal force is here. Gravity is straight down. And this vector gets broken down into its x and y parts. And this angle here is the same as this angle here. So if we do some of the forces in the y direction equals 0, let our coordinate system look like this. Y 
Why does it equal zero? It's not moving up or down. Correct. It's not moving that way or this way. It's sliding along the incline. It's moving in the x direction, but it's not moving in the y direction. So we're going to have the normal force. That's when we add up our forces in the y direction. We're going to have this normal force here. And we're going to have this component of gravity. So the hypotenuse here is gravity. And this side here is the y component of gravity. And it's going down. So it's going to be minus force of gravity, the y component. These have to add up to zero. Does that make sense how we get this? Yes. Okay. So uh, we just add this to the other side, add both sides to, add FGY to both sides, so that tells us that the normal force is the force of gravity in the y direction. And that's just a triangle, right? So this side here, that's our hypotenuse. That's just mg. We can find this side of the triangle. That's the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. That's going to be a cosine function, right? So we can say cosine of theta is adjacent fgy divided by the hypotenuse, which is just mg. So that tells us that the normal force is equal to mg cos theta. So we can multiply mg on both sides. Fgy is mg cos theta. So I can plug it in right there. OK. Uh, so now we can plug that in. So we finally have, I'm going to write this in a different color still. So this is going to be mgh equals 1 half mv squared plus mu times mg cos theta times the distance that it slides. And now you know everything in here except for mass and speed and it's speed that you're asked about. Now, you still no mass, so what are you going to do? You could divide it. Yeah, if you divide both sides by mass, it's going to cancel out here. That mass is going to go into both of those spots up here and cancel it out. So you don't need a no mass. It doesn't matter. Now you can solve it for you. Does that help you with that problem? Yes. Had you gotten that far already? Uh, no, I didn't know to make it negative for the. Um, oh, right here. Uh, oh, right here. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a tricky one that a lot of students forget. So that's part of why I put this on the lab is because I wanted you to run into it so it sticks in your head a little better. Okay. The more times you run into it, the more it'll stick. <laughs> okay, does that help? Yes, I think I'm good for that one now. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Clay, you're next. What, what questions do you have? I'm fresh out of questions right now, so I'm just kind of <laughs> along for the ride today. Fresh out. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Ansley, what questions do you have? I'm the same. I'm just here to learn. Okay. Sounds good. Hunter, what's going on? What questions do you have? Uh, no questions right now. Um, okay. Well, we got a haircut or something. Yeah, I shaved. Wow. All right. <laughs> A lot of time. <laughs> okay. It's it's been a it's been getting close to a decade since I've shaved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my mom was getting on my kids about it. She didn't like it, so I was like, all right. 
<laughs> Fair enough. I Fair don't enough. Hear about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we're back to you then. Can we do chapter six, problem ten? Yep. Let's see. Chapter six. Problem ten. Oh, okay. This is a good one. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me draw the picture, because this is going to take a little while to draw the picture. Okay, so <clears throat> on this problem here, you've got this, uh, looks like a skateboard ramp sort of thing. I guess they used to call it a half pipe back in the day. And you've got one mass here, one mass here. Uh, what are your two masses? Uh, my mass one is 1.95. Is that the left one? Yes. Okay, so 1.95 kilograms. What's this one? 3.9. 0.9 kilograms. And how high off the ground are they? 5.2. Both the same height. Okay. So now, is there friction on this problem? Uh, it doesn't say so. Okay. So unless it tell, I mean, if it if it tells you specifically the coefficient of friction is, then you know there's friction. But if it doesn't say anything, no friction. Okay, so to start with, this is a, a real simple energy problem, right? This mass is going to slide down, and it wants to know how fast it's going at the bottom. So that's just the same thing we've been doing. Energy initial equals energy final minus work not conserved. So uh, let's do that. Energy initial equals energy final. Minus work not conserved. And let's just do this for mass one. We'll do mass two in a minute. Okay. So what kind of energy does it have at the start? Potential energy. Yes. So to start with, it has potential energy. And then sometime later, it's going to slide down the incline and end up down here somewhere. And it's going to be moving this way. Okay, so what kind of energy does it have here? Kinetic. Kinetic energy. Notice I drew this little dashed line here. That's, I'm calling that the ground. So by, by doing that, we're saying this is on the ground here. The best place to put the ground is always at the lowest point of your object. And how much friction do we have? Zero. Yeah, so this piece goes away. So nobody's pushing on it, and there's no friction. And so we just say MGH equals one half MD squared. And divide both sides by M. Solve for V. So, uh, let's see, I multiply both sides by 2. 
so that will cancel out the half over there. So now I'll have 2GH equals V squared. Now I can just take square root of both sides. And that will tell me the final speed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Have you already gotten that far? Okay, so now that's the speed of mass 1 at the bottom. Well, what are we going to do to find the speed of mass 2 at the bottom? Use the same equation. Yeah, we're going to, and does mass even make a difference here? No. Look, mass cancels out, so it doesn't matter. So this is the speed of mass 1, and guess what? It's the speed of mass 2 as well. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so this one slides down and it's going that way. This one slides down and it's going the other way. Okay, so this is a multi-step problem, and that's step one. Step one is they slide down. And this is how you're going to find that speed right before they run into each other. Step two is, what do you think? When they collide? Yeah, step two is the collision. They're going to smash into each other here, and we got to deal with that part now. So this was, I'll write this, I'll call this uh, step one up here. And now we'll do step two. Step two is the collision. So in any collision, In all collisions, momentum is conserved. In elastic collisions, momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved. So what kind of collision is this? Elastic or inelastic? Elastic? Yeah. How do you know that? They bounce off? Yep. So they hit and bounce, so that makes it elastic. So this is an this is an elastic collision. They're going to hit and bounce. So what we're going to do here is we're going to need to use two equations. We're going to need to use conservation momentum, and we're going to need to use conservation of energy, kinetic energy specifically. Um, kinetic energy is tricky, so let's start with momentum. And that's kind of the approach you always want to take. Always start with momentum because it's the easy one. If you can get it done with that, then you're done and you did it the easy way. Kinetic energy is going to be harder and we'd rather not go there if we don't have to. Okay, So uh, let's start with conservation of momentum. So we're going to start with um, momentum initial equals momentum final. P stands for momentum. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. Uh, so before the collision, what has momentum? Both masses. Yeah, they both have momentum. So it's going to be mass 1 times velocity 1 plus mass 2 times velocity 2. Now, what do you know about these two velocities? They're the same? Yeah, they're the same thing. We just did it over here. Except for one catch. Notice the arrows here. Opposite. Which one? Mass two is velocity. Yeah, this one is the negative one because it's going to the left. So this looks like that. And uh, on WebAssign, when for part A, when you're asked to fill in the velocity one and velocity two. Don't forget that little negative sign for velocity 2 that's going to the left. Okay. okay, now, after the collision, so that was, this is momentum initial right here. Okay, now, after the collision, what's going to have momentum? Neither one of them? Or now it would, no man would be conserved? Well, momentum is conserved, yes. But are they both moving, or one moving, or neither moving? 
What are they going to do? Sorry, I'm distracted by uh, I. <laughs> Um, and yeah, they're going to bounce off each other, and they're going to go in opposite directions. So this is this is an elastic collision when they when they hit and bounce. So that means we get a deal. That means after the collision, it's going to be m one times v one final plus m two times v two final. And here's the catch. We don't know which way either one of these are going to go. It might be that they come in and smash and bounce off of each other and both go back the way they came. Or it might be that one is so much heavier that it pushes the other one and they both are going the same direction or it might be they're going the same direction the other way. It's a mess. So I'm going to leave both of these as positive and let the math tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, so, so notice we've got two unknowns here, this one and this one. And since we have two unknowns, that means we need, we need another equation. So guess what we're going to have to go now? The energy one. Yeah, we're going to have to use conservation of kinetic energy, which we were hoping to avoid, but alas, we're stuck with it. Now... <coughs> On your equation sheet, I have a shortcut for you. It only works in a very specific case. It only works in one-dimensional collisions. In other words, if, you, if we're playing billiards and the cue ball comes in and they collide and go off in different directions, you can't use this shortcut. But if they collide and they go in the same direction, like in this case, then you can use the shortcut. Does that make sense? O only one dimensional collisions can you use the kinetic energy shortcut. Okay? So, and you're gonna have to look on the equation sheet because I don't remember the shortcut off. It's, it's like V1 initial minus V2 initial equals V2 final minus V2 initial or something. I don't know. Look it up. Uh, V1 initial minus V2 initial equals negative, and then parentheses, V1 final minus V2 final. Okay. There we go. So there's our second equation. Because you know both of these, right? And here's the same two unknowns that we have over here. So now it's just a algebra problem because you now have two, equa two equations and two unknowns. Okay, so how are you doing so far? Does all this kind of make sense? So far. Okay. Um, Notice this is V1 initial minus V2 initial. Now, which one of these was negative? The V2. Yeah. So we're going to do V1 initial minus a negative V2 initial. We're just going to end up adding these two here. Okay? So, uh... <coughs> We, without, okay, so I think we've pretty much got this problem nailed out. Let me show you the third step, and we'll come back and do algebra in a minute if you want, but let, let me show you the third step. Because part C asks, how high do they go after the collision? So here's what this does for us. These two equations, this one and this one, those two equations are going to tell us how fast they're going to move after the collision. They might be, they might be moving in opposite directions. Let's, let's say they are. If they're moving in opposite directions, one's going to go back up this way, the other's going to go back up that way. 
And so the next question is asking, part C is asking, how high up does each one go? Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And to figure that out, you're gonna do this exact same process here again, like we did for step one. So step three and step one are exactly identical. It's just step three is the reverse order. Instead of starting with potential energy and ending up with kinetic energy, you start with kinetic energy and end with potential energy. Okay. But let's go back to this step. Do you want to wrestle with algebra? Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's go back to step one here. And I don't really care to get these numbers, but from this, I want to point out that, let's just call this uh, V final for the slide. It's this equation here. From that, we can get V initial for the collision. Because that's the same thing, right? Whatever it ends with during the slide is what it starts with for the collision. And so, um, for one, that's positive V final slide. And for two of the collision, that's negative V final slide. Right? We already said this, I'm just kind of drawing it out. Does that make sense? Okay. And now, when we plug those in, here and here, we're going to get uh, V final slide minus negative V final slide equals, um, and I'm going to go ahead and send this negative sign in here. So it's going to be made to be positive V2F minus V1. <coughs> now notice minus negative becomes positive and it's the same thing. So this becomes, is this getting off the board if I write one more line down here? Yep. No. Okay. So this will be two V final slide equals V two F minus V one F. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one more step down here. I'm going to just add that V1 V final to the other side. So I get V2 final is equal to 2 V final of the slide. Um, plus V1 final. Remember it's this V2 final and V1 final that we're trying to get to. Don't get the slide final mixed up with the collision final. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take, since this whole equation here is V2F, I'm going to take it and plug the whole thing in right there. So now we're just solving a system of two equations here. That's all we're doing. So. The physics has already been done, we're just doing algebra. Yeah. So, uh, these two numbers are the same thing. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'm going to write that out here. This will be um, the final of the slide. And of course, that's this one as well. V 
So because both of these have that same piece in there, I can pull that piece right out so that I've got um, the final slide times M1 minus M2. See how this line came from this line? Why is it M1 minus M2? Because that negative sign, it stays with the M2. Okay. And now, on the right side, I'm going to have M1 times V1 final. I just carried that down as it is. And uh, this one here, I'm going to write plus M2 times all of this. Because that's what we're going to put in there for that. Okay. So I'm going to write parentheses to the final slide plus V1 final. Now I'm going to clear out some board space up here. But this is the equation that we're at right now. Does everybody see how we got here? Yes. Okay. So let me clear off some board space. Um, So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to distribute this M2. I'm going to take the M2 and put it in here and here. Okay, so I'll just rewrite the whole thing, but I'll distribute that M2. So my right side I'm going to leave alone. So I'm going to have a V final slide times M1 minus M2 is equal to M1 times V1 final plus uh, 2 M2 V final slide plus M2 times V1 final. I can't see that. Oh, is it too low or too high? Too high. Okay, I can see it now. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Now, notice I want this piece here. And this piece here, they both have that V1 final that we're trying to get to in it. And this, well, we know everything in there, right? We know M2 and we know the final speed of the slide. So we're just going to subtract this piece over here with the rest of that. So we're going to, those two green terms will be left on the left, on the right side, but this piece we're going to subtract over. So we're going to have V final slide. M1 minus M2 minus 2M2 <coughs> times V final slide equals M1 V1 final plus M2 times V1 final. Okay. So now we're going to do uh, two uh, undistributions, two factories. We're going to pull out this V final slide out of this term and this term. And we're going to pull out the V1 final out of this term and this term. So we're going to do it both, both sides 
the same step. So we're going to do the final slide times m1 minus m2 minus 2m2 equals v1 final times m1 plus m2. Now, last step, divide both sides by m1 plus m2, it goes away over here, and that tells us v1 final. And then, if I hadn't erased the board, there was an equation right down here, it was right down here, and it said, V2 final is equal to blah, 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 V1 final. So there you go. And you know V1, V1 and V2 final, which is the speed after the collision. Had you gotten that far, Anna? No, but I had only gotten through the first step before I was stopped. Okay. okay. Does this step make sense? Yes. I think it was just a lot of different things moving over. And yeah. There's a fair amount of algebra with it. Well. Hunter, Clay, what do y'all think? Does all that make sense? Say it again. Okay. Clay hit the hang up button. I'm not sure if he hit the hang up button when he meant to hit the mute button, but uh, he's gone now. <laughs> Maybe he'll be back in a minute. Um, And then step three where it talked about is just do uh, energy again like we did in chapter five. So it's use um, energy initially equals energy final minus work not conserved and there's still no work conserved. Okay. That was a tough problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, And you want me to keep going with this one? Or I think you can take it from here? I think I'll be able to take it from okay. okay. I think I've given you all the pieces. It's, it's just yeah, a matter of you. Just plug and plug, I think. Yeah, just okay. plugging in some numbers and taking that step three, but that's just like step one. Okay. So. Um, this, is, this is kind of a general question, but um, when will we get our grades back? Um, I have the first three tests graded now. Uh, I'm going to keep plugging away on them. So I'm hoping in the next couple days. Uh, okay. We'll see. I, I probably won't get much graded on Independence Day. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. So. And then, so, and the grades that, of course, I already sent the email out, but just to remind you, the grades on WebAssign mean absolutely nothing at this point. Uh, it's, it's just the ones that you got the number correct, uh, the final answer, which usually means that you did the work correct along the way, but not always. You may have just taken a stab in the dark and got it by accident. Probably not, though. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I'm out of questions. Okay. And Hunter, you were just along for the ride. I was just soaking along. Okay, sounds good. Um, and the other two, the other two left, so um, they'll just have to watch the rerun. Okay. okay. Well, thanks, y'all. Thank and, you. And uh, enjoy the Fourth of July. You too.
Okay. Bye-bye.